Hello everyone and welcome to this part of this course, Future Engineering. Of course, I'll be walking you through Future Engineering and modeling in the later parts of this course. So let's dive into Future Engineering. Feature engineering is the process of you using your domain knowledge to select and transform features from raw data before building a predictive model using machine learning. So basically, to make this so simple, we'll be performing these four actions which actually depict feature engineering to as well. So take note, the main goal of feature engineering is to get the best results from your algorithm. So basically, let's perform. Let's start performing the first action, which is handling missing values. So we'll do this. We will do this by using this uh, data assist library. So that's data underscore df, the variable name. Then the ds, which is our data assist library with imported. Then we're calling the feature underscore engineering. Feature underscore engineering underscore feature underscore engineering dot field underscore missing underscore cat. Then passing the variable name. So this will fill for categorical data type. So for numerical data type, just copy and paste this. Change this cards to norm. So by performing this line of codes, you would fill your missing value for both numerical and both categorical data type. So let's create a new feature. And one of the features I want to create is we want to create a feature that will tell us how old is the car. If a car of if we have a car of 2020, that means the car is just one year old. So by that basically we'll just data underscore df uh see the same column name i want to use yeah then this year is 2021 minus the year of the car so it will tell us the age of the car so by just performing this action just checking this the column back okay sorry so of course you can see okay this has not been confirmed let me know okay see so of course you can see now this aero passion car is five years old the accent is four years old so we are just creating this simple feature now you'll be able to get the age of the car and the reason why i, act, I actually replace this with the year itself is that it's still the same thing but this would add uh, this have uh, this is having is this is having an advantage over the year itself and the advantage is just that it will speed up our training process nothing else than that it will need up it will need up it will need to have effect on the machine learning performance the only the only advantage is just that it will speed up the training process time so that's that on that so let's select the feature would we'll be used we will be using for this modeling so there are several ways of doing this you can use the drop function but i love using the multi-dimensional array approach so i will just pass in the columns i want to use so that's I will just copy this, paste it here, then close the block code for multi-dimensional. Okay, then I will remove because I, I want to drop the car name. I don't need it in my feature yet. I don't need it. So I'm just going to so these are the features I want to use for my uh modeling or, or for my engineering part two as well. So I will just run this. So by running this, uh car name has been dropped. So let's check. Car name has been dropped. You can see can name has been dropped so we don't have can name there anymore so basically now the next thing is to perform an encoding techniques because on all this just take this basic assumption your machine learning model cannot learn with categorical data type you need to convert them to numerical these are just basic assumptions accept them in the, in the complex parts they are not true but for now just accept you need to convert your categorical data type to numerical data type and in some algorithm, the algorithm, the algorithm, some algorithm have the complexity to work with this uh, categorical data. But just for this, for this, uh, for this course to be so simple enough, you need to encode your categorical data type to numerical. So of course, what we're doing here is to call the get dummies function from pandas data underscore df equals to pd dot get underscore dummies. So passing the data frame variable name then. Of course, when you are encoding a data, when you are, when you are encoding a, data, a, a a column, the idea is to drop the first or the last, so it won't come up with a repetition. So let's, so this has been performed. So let's check the column again because it's a good practice. It's a good practice to always check your column every time you perform an action because sometimes your Jupyter notebook misbehave. So you just, of course, you can see the four type. We only have petrol and diesel, so it has encode diesel to a new column and petrol 
to a new column too as well. So that's that basically on that. So we now have all our data type in numerical. They are, they are now all encoded. So let's check the categorical data type to confirm this. Let's check the data type to confirm this. These types. So you can see we are, we are they are all numerical data type. The likes of in 64, float 64, and u in 64. What u int what u int means is that it will only accept positive values alone. But int 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 value in 64 would accept both positive and negative value. So that's just the difference between the u int and in 64 basically. So that's that we are we now all our features are now in numerical data type. So we can now go ahead and perform our modeling or we can now go ahead and build our model. So before that, let's just uh, do some basic exploration. Let's do some basic correlation. We want to really see which features are important, which features are not important. So by that, we would import Seaborn. Import Seaborn as SNS. This, will, this is uh, an advanced type plotting. It's, it's similar to Matplotlib, but this one has more features compared to Matplotlib. So then also from Matplotlib, imports pipe plots as plt so i would need this uh library both so yeah i would now i want to plot a i want to plot a i want to plot a heat map to see the correlation within my feature so one of the things i'm going to do here is i would i want to specify my figure size i don't want pandas to i don't want pandas i don't want matplotlib to give me a default a, a default a default visualization so this actually means a runtime configuration because in matplotlib anything you are plotting will come with default settings so whenever you are plotting any graph or any chart in matplotlib it will always plot with the default value but i want to specify my own uh, i want to specify my own uh, uh my own size of the plot here so that will be figure dot fix size so i want to change the fix size so that it will be so big enough to see and read clearly so 16 for the width and 10 for the height then i want to okay so then to now import my heat math my heat map then passing my data in a score df dot correlation so this is the chart itself that will tell me which feature is important to the target so then i'll i'll pass in and not equals to two and not equals to two would uh put in the values and it will annotate the value relationship between each feature so let's wait uh, till it loads out. Wow. So of course you can see. So now, now so just make this so simple. The target here is the present price. So this is the best way to interpret this. Just come to this present price here. Let's start from here. Check here to present price. When you check here, we see minus 0 0.78 correlation to the target, which is the present price. This means that this year is having a negative is having a strong negative correlation to the present price that means here is a good feature for our model so for present price of course this will be one this one means 100 percent because it's the same feature we are checking to each other so of course you will see 100 percent here that means this is the same feature when i see this is the same feature to this so this needs to be neglected then let's come to kms driven the kilometer the motor has driven of course you can see it's having a negative correlation to the present price wow so, but it's it's not compared to the year the year is the year is they having a strong negative correlation so here is like the most powerful features so far from um, from these three features i've checked now so let's check to owner two as well owner to present price when you check owner to present price owner is having a negative correlation too but slight uh is just uh, a little bit lesser to the others then check selling price to present price this is having 100 percent wow this is a bad feature our model will not learn anything from this um, it's just like we are giving our model the answer already so this selling price is having 100 percent correlation to our model this is a bad feature it will not help the machine learning to learn anything at all so what we'll do is for this course yeah we will not drop it because i want to show you something so important like i will show you the reason why this feature will affect your model so for this part of this course you will not drop it so that you'll be able to see the effects of this model in our post analysis after modeling so i will not drop this and look at the fuel type diesel petrol and transmission manual the same we've, che we've checked 
for all columns. Of course, you can see they are all having negative correlation. So your model, your, your feature can either have a positive correlation or a negative correlation. So if it is having a positive correlation, it's telling you that it's having a strong positive correlation to the target. And if it is negative, it's having a negative strong correlation to the target. So uh, when, you, when you are seeing values around 0 0.0023, 0 0.002 is like those values are good but when you're having precision more than three that is a bad feature like this is, is a bad feature if this was the value we are having for the target for this i would have dropped this but looking at this all these features are good except for selling price and i said i'm not going to drop it because i want to show you a concept in the post eda part so that's that basically we are not dropping any feature in this part of this course so basically, uh, this is how the feature will be using for our modeling. So that's that on feature engineering, as simple as it is. We'll, we'll, uh, we have a real concept here. And of course, in the next part of modeling, we would see the reason why you will see the reason why this selling price would affect our model. And of course, we would have to rerun the script and remove the selling price and see the effects of this to our model. So thank you for watching this course and just prepare yourself for the next part of the course as well. Bye.